Good morning, YouTube. First off, let me apologize about the audio. It is very breezy out here this morning, and with all these cars flying by us, it's not gonna make it any better. All right, guys, if you saw last night's video, you know that we got stuck here on the side of the road just before the Carlisle exit because Goliath spit a drive shaft out. So uh, by the time I got done recording the video last night, it was like 1.30, quarter to two. I got it all edited and uploaded and finally got to bed around three or so, I guess, but I couldn't sleep. Well, that's because I was so wired from the coffee or the whole excitement of, uh, you know, having to go back and get the drive shaft last night and everything, or just the cars whizzing by, not moving over, just literally rocking Goliath back and forth. Yeah, I just laid there for hours. I know I fell asleep a few times, but not good sleep at all. Anyway, it's just after 7 a.m. now, and uh, like I said, not a lot of sleep, but we've got the drive shaft here. What I need to do at this point is climb underneath Goliath and assess the entire situation. I don't know what has been damaged other than the drive shaft itself and the airline, so I need to find out. Now what really sucks is because we lost air, all the airbags are dumped and there's uh, not enough room there for me to crawl underneath. So I have to crawl underneath from the other side underneath the, uh, the battery box and then once I get to the center of the truck, I can shimmy my way back. Not looking forward to this, it's gonna suck. But I'm gonna go ahead and go get a flashlight and a couple of snips. Go down there. That way, if I can find the airlines, I can snip a section out. Know I got the right size. That way, hopefully, when the parts stores open up here very soon, I can just unload the motorcycle, run into town, get what I need. Hopefully, fingers crossed, to get this beast off the side of the road. There is the drive shaft. Little banged up. Hopefully, it's still usable. I don't know whether it's bent or what, but looks like the yoke end is still pretty good, but obviously the universal joint came apart. All right, guys, so I'm down underneath and you can see the main air supply to the brake relays has been severed. I've got three other airlines here that have been severed. I believe two of them are going to the uh, airbags and one of them is the signal line for the brake relay. I've also got one electrical wire right here, but there's ample enough room that that's an easy repair. I've got another wire here that is really, really long, so it's got to go somewhere way up there where it connects and I haven't found that yet. But this U joint looks okay. All the carrier bearings look okay. But the problem is right here, the yoke is broke. So that's gonna be an issue. I know that these are Rockwell rear ends and uh, they are no longer in production. So I'm gonna try to find a socket to fit that, see if I can get the yoke off of it. Maybe we'll get lucky. Well guys, luckily the yoke came out much easier than I thought it would. Had a two and three sixteenths socket and I used a, a half inch drive to a three quarter drive adapter and luckily my trust me Craftsman half inch impact took it right off without, a, without an issue and then uh, it slid right off of the input shaft pretty easy, the, the pinion gear. Sometimes you get to beat these things off. I was really, really pleased to know that that came off easy. Maybe. Just maybe that's a good sign that uh, we won't have any trouble getting this thing fixed. But this is the part I worry about, guys. As I was saying, we were under the truck, but I know it was kind of hard to hear me. This is an old Rockwell rear end, and we had to put a power divider in that rear end a couple of years ago, back in 2019, I believe it was. And we weren't able to rebuild the rear end because none of the parts to rebuild it were available. So we had to put a junkyard rear end in it and we had to reuse our yoke because the yoke that was on it, or because the yoke that was on the used junkyard uh, power divider wasn't the right one to work with our drive shaft or 
or something like that. I don't remember. It was a couple years ago. But this is going to be the tricky part to find. So now I'm going to go uh, start doing some Google searching and see if we can't find a, a heavy truck driveline shop around here or even a salvage yard. See if we can't find another one of these. I think the universal joint would be pretty easy. They're relatively common. And I've got the one here that failed and I've got a part number on it. So that should be easy. This, this is going to be the tricky part. All right, guys, and uh, removing the U-joint from the drive shaft so I make sure it's right. One of the bolts on one side, the head was sheared off, but luckily I was able to get to it with a pair of channel locks and get it out, and I think this side looks okay. Unfortunately, when I flip it over, the other side doesn't look so good. So this one here was missing. You see that one's boogered up right there a little bit. And uh, that bolt is broken off down in the hole, which could be very challenging to try to get out. A little bit of beat up there. I might be able to drill that and get it out and clean up this edge, but a little worried about that. All right, I got both of the holes clear. This one, the bolt was not actually broken off on, guys. Believe it or not, it was just packed full of asphalt. But I'm thinking this is our failure point because I can't get a bolt to thread back into that one. You see the threads are pretty boogered. The threads on this one are stripped as well. So I'm thinking that was our failure point. Those two bolts had probably backed out somewhat and then created play in there and then it just ripped the bolts out. Once that cap came off, Nothing kept that uh, U-joint true in there, and then it started to vibrate, which threw it apart pretty quick. It really sucks. Remember, guys, I just greased all this stuff before we came on this trip. No, I did not check the torque on those bolts, and maybe I should have. Better believe I'll check the rest of them before we hit the road again. But I don't know that that drive shaft end is going to be usable. They may have to cut it off and put a new one on there. So now that I've got the full situation assessed, we got to come up with a solution. All right, guys, we had a slight change of plans. You know, I've been doing research for, I don't know, 45 minutes or so. I cannot seem to find a driveline shop right here that can do anything, especially if they can find some of these hard to find parts. So, made the decision, we're gonna have a towed off the highway. I called the local Fleet Pride right up the road and for them to take us to the, uh, the TA, it's only gonna be about 400 bucks. They're gonna combo tow and leave everything hooked up. Um, so I decided to do that, at least get it off of the highway. That way at least we're a little bit safer. But in order to do that, I've still got to fix the airlines because right now we can't disengage the parking brake or air up the airbags. And the way Goliath sits when the airbags are down, the fender wells actually sit right on the tires. So we can't tow it that way without doing damage to the tire. So I'm gonna go ahead and unload the motorcycle, run into town, go to the Fleet Pride, grab some airlines and some unions, come back over here, try to get them all fixed before the tow driver gets here. All right, guys, I just got back from the Fleet Pride. I got the stuff to fix the uh, airlines. However, the tow driver's already here. Yeah, he made really good time. So uh, I explained to him what's going on. In fact, I, I got on the interstate, it was coming up. I was gonna go up to the next exit, turn around and come back. And I saw him already here. So I, uh, I cheated, I cut across the median on the Harley and uh, zipped over here really fast. But we try to get these fixed really fast before he's ready. Hi right, guys, I want to get some footage of this road train now with a tow truck towing Goliath, so now it's one really long unit. But I left my phone in the trailer, so I was gonna get him going on the interstate, but we'll get him as he's trying to park somewhere.
Hi guys, I'm here with Sean. I just want to give him a big shout out for coming to rescue us off the side of the highway. He runs this beautiful Peterbilt here for a Fleet Pride Towing and Recovery Service. He got out there really, really fast. He did a great job. Sean, I just want to thank you very much. Appreciate you. Right. And uh, hope you have a good day. Thank you for getting us on the side of the road so quickly. I just hope you can get a, get a fix back on. Yeah, now it's better just finding something to repair the, the drive shaft and we can head home to North Carolina. All right, guys. If you need a Fleet Pride in your Carlisle area, give them a call. Hi guys, Sean has left us. Katie and I are walking inside to the uh, the TA, well Petro, I think it's actually a Petro rat. But um, got some research, we got some leads on places that might be able to fix the drive shaft for us, but haven't had any coffee yet, so I wanted the coffee first. We'll make some phone calls and uh, figure out exactly what we're doing. But it's only a little bit after 11 a.m., so all in all, not too bad time this morning. It only took me about 10 minutes to sort of fix all those airlines, but because the driver was there waiting for me, I didn't uh, mess with filming it a whole lot. I just jumped under there and did it. All right, guys, we had a, a breakfast and uh, you know what? Really good meat lovers omelet there inside the Petro. Came out pretty good. And some coffee. So now I'm ready to get back to it. Now, Chris Baker, he's uh, one of our viewers. He sent me a message this morning and he mentioned a Cook's Brothers uh, that they were able to do the drive shaft repair and so on and so forth. And it just so happens that Sean, our tow truck driver, had suggested the same people. So I went ahead and gave them a call while we were having breakfast. And he thinks that he might be able to help us, but he's going to need the other part of the drive shaft that's still in the truck. So right now, uh, Katie just fired Goliath up. We're airing the airbags back up. Make it easier for me to curl my fat ass back underneath there. I'm going to remove that part. I'm going to take out the uh, universal joint in order to get that. And then uh, I'll call them. They might even be able to come pick it up. They're just over in Mechanicsburg. Well, uh, something, something hill, whatever. They're just, they're just right down the road about 10, 12 miles. So hopefully they'll be able to come pick up the part. If not, I'll have to try to find a way to rent a car or borrow a car or do something to uh, get over there. Now, Chris also offered to uh, bring us a truck. And so did Andre. Andre and Harry only live about two hours from here as well. So I really don't want to inconvenience anybody though. So I'm gonna do what we can without having to bug people. All right, guys, I got that piece out. Of course, you know, it's pretty nasty laying in a truck stop parking lot. There's so much trash in this parking lot. Urine bottles is disgusting, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So got it out. I went ahead and called Cooks again, uh, talked to the gentleman there, and they are sending a driver out to pick it up. I'll probably follow them in on the motorcycle. That way I can actually meet the people and talk to them and kind of get a good synopsis of what's going on. But there's a good chance he's going to have to completely rebuild the drive shaft or make me a new one. Uh, but he needs this one for all the measurements and everything else. So very unlikely we will get this back today. I'm not even holding my breath on tomorrow at this point. But I don't know. It's got to get done. Can't go anywhere until we fix it, right? All right, guys, so I am uh, I'm here at Cook Brothers, and I uh, just met with Cliff. He is the dry shaft guy, and his shop is really cool, man. Uh, big, long machines, so to uh, do the balancing and the welding and get everything nice and precise. Uh, and he's a, a really cool guy. So um, they did not have the yoke in stock. Go figure. So we have to special order it. I want to know where it's at. It's in Tennessee, pretty close to home but we can't get there without it. So we're uh, we're overnighting it and get it here hopefully tomorrow. It's kind of late in the day, so the overnight doesn't guarantee it'll be here tomorrow, but he's gonna do everything he can to get us out of here pretty quick. There are some other vehicles in front of us, he says, but they're, they're kind of like fleet vehicles and he knows that we really want to go home. So he's gonna do what he can to uh, kind of squeeze us in between when the parts get here. But that's all we can do for today. That is literally, all that we can do for today. So I think I'm going to get back over to the truck stop. I'm going to go inside and take a shower, get these nasty, disgusting, dirty clothes off, and uh, get some videos and stuff to edit. But just want to thank you guys for watching. I know we didn't get it all fixed today, but it's in progress. 
And this is just life on the road, guys. This is why we started the channel. So that some of you that think we're out here living life like rock stars, it's not always that nice. Now we're stuck in a truck stop parking lot in a town that we're not familiar with. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Until the next time I see you, keep those engines running.